Megan. I'm a senior library associate with the Pikes Peak Library District, and today I will be giving you the instructions on how to make a DIY woven coaster. Um, so this is our finished product, as you can see, and we'll go ahead and get started. You should have received your uh, material signal, and in your uh, bag there should be a cardboard piece, an 11-foot piece of yarn, two two yard pieces or two six foot pieces of yarn to roughly three feet foot long pieces of color of yarn a plastic embroidery needle needle a plastic fork and two wooden popsicle sticks um before the pro before we continue make sure you have the following to complete this craft scissors glue a ruler tape and pencil or pen so if you're lucky, you hopefully got a piece of cardboard that is already six inches long by four inches wide. For the purposes of this demonstration, I have made mine long, bigger than that. So that way I can uh, demonstrate how to proceed. So mine is cut almost to size. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it to size real quick. There we go. Next, in the center of our loom, uh, or the base for our loom, basically, we're going to mark where uh, the center is and do four inches by four inches. We're going to keep those excess inches on the ends uh, because we want those for when we start stringing our loom together. So we're we'll still ahead and do that. I'm going to tilt the computer screen down so you can see what I'm doing. You want it kind of facing this way. I guess it really doesn't matter, but that's how I like to work. You want an inch on either end of your cardboard. We're going to go ahead and mark where that is. You want it even so that way you have a good square for your coaster. Okay, and so now it might be a little hard to see, but I have those lines marked. The next step we're going to do, and if you're following along with the instructions, is we are going to mark every half a centimeter along the base. So it's going to be only quite a few marks, so you're going to have to bear with us. Mine's a little old. Some of my markings on my ruler a little faded. Okay. I'm going to do that on both sides. Okay, at the end you'll need of the ruler. Uh, some people like to draw grids just to have it easier for their lines to line up. If you wish to do that, go ahead. I'm not going to do that um, just because it's, it's going to line up pretty naturally on its own as you start the weaving process. So the next step is after you've marked all those lines, if you're going to cut from the end of your cardboard, oops, there it is. Um, so end of the cardboard to the line. You're not going to go in here at all. You want this to remain untouched. You should have quite a few of these small cuts. And don't worry if it got a little off kilter. Mine got a little off kilter. It's still going to be mostly lined up. So where your notches are, it's still going to be very even. So don't worry too much if you got a little off kilter. That's not a big deal. Go ahead and repeat those same steps on the other side, and then we'll be ready to string our seam. 
All right, so once you've completed cutting the notches in your cardboard, you're going to want to grab your the, your 11-foot uh, piece of yarn. And make sure it's not knotted or anything before you start, otherwise that adds a bit of a, a hindrance to the process. There we go. Taking one end, you're going to tape it down at a start at a starting or stopping point. I'm going to tape mine here because it's nice and good. And we're going to start warping or stringing our loom. You'll be going back and forth on both sides as you as you do this. So be mindful of that as you go. Okay, so we're coming up on the end of our piece and you might have a little bit of excess cardboard, that's okay. Um, just go ahead and tape down that other side. Don't worry about it. So now we have our loom all ready to go. It's been warped. And now we're ready to start our the weft the weaving process, also called wefting. Or um, pardon me, moving the um the yarn the other direction is called wefting. So first thing, you're going to pick a color out. You have four choices of colors. So um, you have the two shorter pieces and then the two longer pieces. This just gives you a little variety to work with. Uh, it doesn't matter which one you start with. Uh, for the sake of just showing like how to start and stop, I'm gonna start with a shorter piece. So we have this black yarn here. We're gonna go ahead and string our needle. This is an embroidery needle. It's plastic. It's good for like bigger materials like yarn. And we are going to go ahead and get started. The popsicle sticks are to help you with the process because what they can be used for is one, to insert and lift that yarn so it's a lot easier to see and do things with. The other use for them is to help with the wefting process. So you can insert them between the strings as you go and then lift. So bear that in mind. You don't have to use them if you don't want to. I am going to, for the sake of just demonstrating, I'm going to insert a popsicle stick to help lift that string up. I'm going to bring it down here where my starting point is just so that's nice and raised. It just makes it a little easier to work with. And then we're going to begin the wefting process. So if you refer to your handout, I have a guide here that shows you the basic idea for wefting. So you're going in and out for every other string. And then when you reach the end, you're going to turn and go in and out for the opposite. So that way it makes this nice checkered pattern, but what it's doing is also making the string um, because it's opposite. It helps make that nice um, tight uh, weave, weave woven texture. Okay, so if you uh, miss what I'm doing, just refer to this and try and uh, give it your best shot. Okay, so I have my loom here. I'm going to start, I'm going to push up on that one, down on the second, up on the third, down on the fourth, up on the fifth, down on the sixth, and so on until I reach that end point. Okay. I'm going to pull through. It's okay if your needle drops, that's not a big deal. We'll pull through and you're going to leave a little bit of a tail not to worry about. And so you can see every other line is covered with a little bit of that black, that black yarn that I'm using. And then every other line is, on, is over that black yarn. Now we're ready to head back on our west. Okay. 
So now, since this one is over on our last loop, this was the other side, we want to go, or since the, the starting, uh, the warp is over the west, your vertical lines are your warp, your horizontal lines are your west. We now want the west to cover the warp. So now we're going to go over and then under, over and then under, okay? So we have it looking, oop, and that will happen. That's okay. Go ahead and fix that guy up. Pull through. Don't pull too tight. You don't want it to start ruining, like damaging your coaster. But you can see that same demonstration in that uh, diagram that's on the instructions where we have that back and forth and then the opposite. So you just wanna remember to alternate every time. Probably the e one of the easier ways to remember it is when you start, you start on the even, and when you go back, or when you start, you start on the odd, pardon me. And when you go back, you, you focus on the even. So when you're starting, you want to be um, under every odd number string. And when you go back, you want to be under every even number string. Or you can flip it at the other way where you want to be over every even number string and on, or over every odd number string. But for me, when I'm counting on where I'm going, on where I'm going, I tend to do one, three, five, seven. So it, it doesn't matter, just as long as this looks like this. And we'll keep going here in a moment, but to show you what the fork is for, this is what will help you comb this all down. And that nice, even, I want to pull that bit a little bit. Oh, this is perfect. I missed the line. You can tell when you've missed the line because there's suddenly this huge gap. And so I'm actually going to carefully use my fork, or you can use your needle to remove where you've messed up. And we're just going to fix it real quick. And again, that's going to happen. That's okay. So I need to go do, do, do. There we go. Now I'll use my fork. I'm just kind of also gently pulling on those tails just to help get it all down. And we'll be using that to help get that nice even line going across. That nice tight line. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and do this for a few moments and then we'll finish up this color. And I'll show you how to tie it off or rather how to start the next color. So once you've gotten to close to about probably three or four inches of tail, what you're going to do is complete your last line. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that here. You're going to pull through very gently. And you're just going to leave that tail. What we will do later is we will either glue it in or there is a way to sew it in with your embroidery needle. So you should have something that is similar to this. Maybe both of your tails are on this side or on this side. Doesn't matter. You should have a few lines and that have been nice and combed. Um, mine are pretty tight. You can barely see the warp. Now I'm ready to start with the next color. So I'm actually gonna do a longer color now. I'm gonna choose uh, one of my longer ones. And we're just going to repeat the same process depending on what starting point you're at. So if you're leaving off on a different end than you started, just be sure you're still following the pattern that you started already. You don't wanna change the pattern. Um, oh, maybe there, there we go. My yarn's giving me a little bit of issue. It's okay. 
All right. So since I started left off here going over, I'm going to be starting on this side going under. And just be sure you repeat that same series of steps as you go along. Oops. I'm going to close my popsicle stick again. Go ahead and pull all the way through. And again, just leave a little bit of a tail, um, maybe like an inch or so, not too big. And you'll just keep doing those patterns until you come to a stopping point. And you'll repeat that, that, that coming off step and uh, coming back on step in the same processes for your other two colors, if you, you end up using all of your colors. Um, some of you might just might want just to use the two colors, which is fine. If you want to use the three colors, that's fine. If you want to use all four, that's fine too. Um, so I will see you in a few more moments. I'll go ahead and do another line just to show the process. But I'll see you in a few more moments after I have completed this step, this step with the rest of my colors. So just remember, so step one to do it. every other, every other. You want to be sure you're combing as you go along just to make sure it's staying nice and neat. I'm going to go ahead and take this out. Just getting that point where with my board that I don't really need it. Okay, so just remember every other, and I'll see you in a few seconds. Welcome back. So by now you should have a decent looking square. I'm just spreading mine down towards the center a bit more so that way I can actually like shape it a bit. So you want it to have that nice square coaster shape. Okay. Oops, that's a little too loose right there, but that's okay. And so we have everything all good to go. By now you should have a nice little square and some excess space. That'll actually work out really well for one for the next step after this part. Uh, so now we're going to deal with those excess tails. So there's two ways that you can do this. The first way involves taking your sewing, your embroidery needle, you might have to pull a little bit, and then very carefully inserting it into that side there and pulling it through those strands. And here we go. And then, of course, using your fork to smooth it down if need be. Um, I am not going to worry about that little extra. I'm just actually going to cut that off and call it good. And I'll get that with this other side, too. The other way that you can deal with the excess tail is to just knot it off. So we're going to do that real quick with this guy. And boop. Nice and tight. And then you just remove the excess, like I said. There we go. I'm actually going to knot off on this guy as well because there's two of them right there. There we go. We have that one side done. I have this one more tail. So I'm going to go ahead and use that sewing method just to show that again. So that's okay. Rolling it in. Put the needle back through. Let's try that again. Okay. So we're pushing it gently through the loop best as we can, okay? And then we're gonna pull out through the other side. And again, I'm just gonna cut off where I pull it out. And one thing you can do for added security is to take 
glue. If you have Elmer's like liquid glue, that'll work. I'm using tacky glue just because that's what I happen to have on hand today. What you can do is you can add just a very small amount. You don't want it to be too much. You don't want it to be too much because then that kind of, that can make your uh, coaster just a little uh, more frustrating to deal with. Just gonna add that little bit there just to help really hold it in place. And like I said, you don't want too much, just enough to like help it stiffen and so it doesn't come out of place. All right, so that is the front part of your coaster. So your coaster, uh, I believe in our instructions that the ideal end result was four by four inches. But now, um, now that I, uh, I've finished and I've used all four of my colors, you're actually gonna have closer to about three by three inches, which is still perfect for a coaster. And then you'll have those nice tassels on the end to really make this dazzle. Um, so let's go ahead and start on that next step. So if you're following along with the, the steps, you are now at number 10. So we're gonna finish the coaster. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut the work here on the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that loose. I'm going to take those tape down strands out carefully. And we're going to very carefully remove, but not all at once, our work. So I'm actually going to do, do it like this, where it's two at a time. So you see how the rest are kind of still back there, but there's two here. The reason why I'm doing it this way is because it gives me a chance to do the knot. So we're gonna do one and then two. Okay. Get this third guy. And I'm actually gonna use the second guy here and do one. And then two. Okay. So we're getting a nice kind of knotted texture here at the end. And we're going to repeat this step all the way through the end. If you want to do a different series of knots, that's fine. There's not really a right or wrong way. Uh, you do need to knot the ends in order for your poster to stay together. Um, or you need to uh, interweave your warp into the coaster using uh, the needle. Let's go ahead. You see, as I'm working, I'm actually brushing my tassels to the side, just so they're out of the way. Um, one, two.
and we have our last guy here up here. Okay, and so now you should have something that looks pretty sweet. Here it is. Well, we have a nice line of knots and then this excess string. And what you can do if you want is you can keep knotting to give it that more finished look or uh, maybe a more stylized design. I'm happy with it. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to cut a nice, relatively even oops, line across. Okay. So how's that kind of carpet look? Now go ahead and repeat that on the other side and I'll be back with you in a few moments. By now you should have cut and tied and cut both sides of your coaster and so it should be off of your cardboard and you now have a co woven coaster. Um, and again, just to go over what we learned today, um, the process of coaster involved using a loom with your warp, which were those vertical lines that ended up being your tassels and your wax, which were these horizontal lines, which are their colors. And you should have, it should be somewhere between three and four inches by three and four inches. Um, and it should fit a standard size kind of coffee mug or cup where I have my energy dirt and it fits my, my thing there. But I also have my giant glass here as well. And even though it is the entire space of the bottom, it covers it enough to catch any of that extra wetness. So you are now good to go, your coaster We'll now start protecting your furniture and you can brag about how you are an artisanal crafter. Thank you and have a great day.